Hi guys, in this tutorial we're going to make a very basic um, RPG game using JavaFX. So we won't have any graphics, most of the stuff is going to be text-based for simplicity. And um, we're going to build a minimal combat system. So that's the focus of today's tutorial. This is the typical boilerplate code that you see in pretty much every video. So I'm not going to focus on it too much. We are going to have vertical blocks, however, as the root. Let's do spacing 10. Okay. Right, so uh, we're going to base our combat on um, rock, paper, scissors. And you can have three actions. Um, it doesn't have to be three, it can be extended. Therefore, um, now we're going to have attack, charge, which is basically a full on attack, um, and block. So this beats that, charge beats block, block beats attack. And we can have three action results. So we can either win, so we're going to do turn base by the way, lose or draw. That should be simple enough. And based on that we're going to create three buttons so the user can press one of these three buttons to say he's going to attack, charge or block. and each button will do something. <clears throat> but something is make move based on that particular action. This point we also want to obtain AI action. Now we're going to keep this really simple and just return something random. So this will get one of these. <clears throat> and return it as an AI action. Next, we want to know if some action beats other action, right? So we can check. Check against, rather. And instead of hard coding the these three Let's create a map. It's going to store winning combinations. Attack beats charge and so on. And this is why it can um, extend to more than just three actions, which means you don't have to hard code this. If it's the same, then it's draw. Alternatively, um, if we get this and we win against 
whatever is returned by the statement and if it's that then it's when else it's draw no it's lose because there are only three possible actions So now we can check against AI action and see what we can do with it. If it's draw, then we don't do anything. If it's when, we do something and else it has to be lose. Uh, we probably want to have some output on the screen. Let's add all the buttons to uh, the scene graph as well as our output. Six hundred is the height, which means we can go up to say five hundred. And yeah, let's add a bit of padding. That'll do. So if it's draw, we just say it's draw. win and lose I'm just going to increase the font just a little bit yep that's fine <clears throat> right, uh, let's add some character data because currently we only have stuff that's being printed to the screen but there's actually no game state. I'm going to create a class called, let's call it char. I'm going to store various things like hit points, attack power, charge power, and block power. Now let's create our characters. Player, 100 hit points, attack power, 15, charge power, 20, block power, 5. Just some arbitrary numbers. Um, let's update info then. And we'll need to add two strings so it prints correctly. <clears throat> Let's just print H point um, hit points. Yeah, we need to add the new line at the end. Okay, so uh, if it's win, we need to deal some damage, right? Um, how do we do that? Well, first of all, we need to calculate damage based on the action. Uh, 
Uh, this shouldn't be reachable, so new assertion. Uh, on no action. That's pretty straightforward. Just return the values. Uh, these are base values, and we'll see if we can add some critical chance to it, because critical chance makes everything uh, more interesting. Usually does. So, uh, damage. Uh, this is where we win, which means player calculate damage. User action. And here we have AI calculate damage, AI action. Player hit points, remove damage, and then player deals um, to AI. To your player. AI HP damage. Let's see. Attack, deals 15 damage to AI. Uh, probably want to print what happened in the end. So we're going to update info so we know what the game state is. Tag draw, draw, deals 15 damage to AI, yet my my health goes down. No, that's not correct. AI health should go down. Yep, 15 damage to AI, AI HP is 85. I can keep doing that, and he will never block, I suppose. There we go, he blocked. That'll do. Okay, what else? Um, yeah, let's add critical chance, which is um, actually reasonably easy to implement. Just add this method that returns a billion because we either we either strike critically or we don't, and chance, and we return next and a hundred is chance is greater than this, right? Um, let's just check if chance is zero, then this will never be true. Uh, yeah, because this will never be negative. If chance if chance is hundred, it will always be true because the range is between zero and ninety nine. That's inclusive, right? Yeah, ex uh, exclusive. Sorry. Um, and if it's thirty, then there are seventy other integers above thirty, so we get thirty percent chance. I think that works. Um, let's go with that. So if we critically strike, let's give it a 35% chance, then we're going to deal extra 15 damage. Okay, let's see. We've seen. No, let me strike you critically. There we go. So player deals thirty damage to AI, although our base power is fifteen, and our critical chance worked, and so we're now dealing thirty damage for that particular instance of attack. And you can, of course, do other 
three um, actions. You can also extend the actions, by the way. The way we've done this um, should allow you to extend to more than just one action. So you can have um, magic attack or something, and then magical defense or some similar things. And um, interestingly, you can also do things like this. So you can add attributes. And as you level up, which means with attributes you can add levels. So this kind of you know goes on and on. And you can do stuff like this. So as your luck increases, the chance to critically strike also increases. Which is nice. And you can also say, I'm going to have another <clears throat> dexterity attribute, which will also increase this. So it's 15 plus dexterity. So it's going to increase the base critical damage that is going to uh, be added to your attack. Um, and it's on, you know, these simple things, but they have a huge effect on the whole kind of um, combat system. Plus, you can start adding things like, um, I don't know, defense or armor. So it's not just going to be damage, but the damage gets reduced by AI armor, say. And then you can start adding things like percentage based reduction flat based reduction, um, various status effects, um, so on and so forth, basically. But so far, what we have is a very simple um, foundation, or um, I suppose it's a foundation that you can use to start building something slightly more interesting than this, and maybe eventually add graphics to it. Um, once you're happy with the game model that you have so far. And um, that's, a bit, that's about it yeah, for this tutorial. I don't think um, we're going to add anything else. Um, so we've covered how to create a basic um, RPG combat system, and it is really basic. Uh, although it uses some um, rock, paper, scissors mechanic and that adds a bit of you know twist to it i suppose just the other day i was uh, discussing with a student how to um, randomize the chess um, game so if you're playing chess you're it's a very balanced game as you probably guessed so far but interestingly if you add things like um, dice roll so for example your your move is you want to take um, your um, opponent's bishop or just any other piece but you can't do that until you roll a value that is greater than the uh, your opponent's um, defense roll so you can easily add some randomness to it which makes um, this chess game even more interesting it adds an extra dimension to it i suppose um, but it's more of a thing for people who are interested in this um, i guess but anyway, um, thanks for watching.